Circassian is a language in the northwestern Caucasian branch of Caucasian languages. Circassian and Abkhaz are sister languages within this branch. Circassian people call their language Adigebze or Adigabze. There are various hypotheses on a possible relationship between Circassian and Hattic, one of the ancient languages of Anatolia. With the exile of most Circassians to the Ottoman Empire during and after the Caucasian-Russian War, which ended on May 21, 1864, the Circassian speakers became geographically dispersed. Within the borders of the Ottoman Empire, the Circassian people were placed in the Balkans, Anatolia, and the Middle East. With the fall of the Ottoman Empire, they found themselves in different nation-states. Circassian is spoken today in Syria, Jordan, Israel, and Turkey, where there is a large Circassian diaspora outside of the Caucasus. My name is Bislan Jaloka. I was born in Jordan. Both my mother and my father speak Circassian. They spoke Arabic at work and then they spoke Arabic at home after work. They did not speak to each other in Circassian all that much. I used to speak Circassian mostly with my grandmother growing up. That's because she didn't speak Arabic. Her native tongue was Circassian and she spoke Circassian until the day she died. Circassians, who originally remained in the Caucasus, on the other hand, were resettled, concentrated in certain areas. In the early years of the Soviet Union, autonomous administrative structures were established in places where the Circassian population was relatively dense. Today, the Circassian-speaking population in the Caucasus mainly lives in the republics of Adige, Karachay Cherkessia, and Kabardino-Balkaria, in the Krasnodar and Stavropol Krais of Russia, and the Mozdoksky district of North Ossetia. Circassian is divided into two dialects. The Western dialect, or Western Circassian, historically spoken in the region between the Kuban River and the Black Sea, is divided into the dialects of Abzeh, Bjedur, Chemirkoy, and Shapsu. Today, it is the official language in the Republic of Adige. According to 2010 data, it is spoken by 129,419 people. The Eastern, or Kabardian dialect, consists of the dialects Kabardian, Kuban Zelenzuk, Beslene, and Mozdok. It is the official language in the Republic of Kabardino Balkaria and Republic of Karachay Cherkessia and is spoken by 587,547 people. Circassian is one of the notable languages of the world in terms of its phonetic wealth. The number of consonants in its inventory attracts attention in particular. West Circassian has 57 consonants and 7 vowels, whereas East Circassian has 48 consonants and 7 vowels. Circassians encountered writing systems very early on. Circassian words written in the Greek alphabet are found on coins and tombstones belonging to the Sindian kingdom founded 4th century BC. Although this tradition lasted until the Middle Ages, the Circassians did not have a standardized writing system as they did not have a central state structure. The first attempts at an alphabet started at the beginning of the 19th century. Ivan Gratzilevsky an Orientalist professor at the St. Petersburg State University, tasked with teaching Circassian officers Russian, created an adaptation of the Russian alphabet in order for the officers to communicate with each other. This, in turn, gave the young officers in the guards unit the idea to create an alphabet for the Circassian language. One of these young officers was Shora Noguma. In 1840, he published the very first Circassian alphabet with 49 letters, which he created with additions to the Russian letters along with his grammar book. In 1843, he created another alphabet based on Arabic letters. Following in Nogoma's footsteps, his comrade-in-arms, Sultan Khan Girey, devised another alphabet consisting of 63 letters. Furthermore, Umar Barse's alphabet, based on Arabic letters, was published in Tbilisi in 1853. The day Barsay's alphabet was published, March 14th, has been celebrated as the Circassian Language Day since the year 2000. Although some Russian linguists and Circassian intellectuals tried to come up with Circassian alphabets towards the end of the Tsarist period, these efforts were not supported by the state, and the conditions of the Circassian people at the time did not allow writing to be a tool of education and enlightenment. According to the 1920 census, the proportion of illiterate Circassians in the Caucasus was over 90%. After the fall of the Tsarist Russia and the creation of the Soviet Union in 1922, work began on creating alphabets for people without a script. During the first period of the Soviets, the alphabets devised were in Arabic, Latin and finally Cyrillic script, respectively. The projects for the two dialects of Circassian were conducted separately. For Western Circassian, the Arabic script Circassian alphabet was used from 1918 to 1927. 
In 1927, the Latin script-based alphabet, prepared by the Russian linguist Nikolai Yakovlev and his Circassian colleague Daoud Ashamov, was adopted for education in the Adige Autonomous Region. In 1938, this was changed to the Cyrillic alphabet prepared once again by Yakovlev and Ashamov. For Kabardian Circassian, spoken in the Kabardino Balkaria and Karachai Cherkessia regions, Arabic script based alphabets were used between 1917 and 1923, Latin script based alphabets were used from 1924 to 1936. And from 1936 onwards, the Cyrillic alphabet devised by Tuta Borikwe was adopted, which is still in use today. Because the number of sounds of Western and Eastern dialects differ, the number of letters in their alphabets is also different. There are 66 letters in the Western Circassian alphabet and 59 letters in the Kabardian alphabet. Studies on language in the Ottoman Empire, where the vast majority of Circassians lived, began at the end of the 19th century. Ahmed Javid Pasha prepared a Circassian alphabet adapted to Arabic script and printed it in Istanbul in 1897 and prepared compilations of folk literature. With the establishment of the Second Constitution Era, Circassian Unity and Solidarity Association, active between 1908 and 1923, of which Ahmed Javid Pasha was the president, published their journal Gwaza with this alphabet. Literary and religious books were printed with the alphabet as well. In the following period, Circassian intellectuals prepared a large number of alphabets based on Arabic and Latin scripts. The first educational institution in the history of the Circassian diaspora was the Circassian Cooperation School, which opened its doors in Istanbul in 1910. Until its closure in 1914, Circassian education in this private school was carried out in the Arabic script. A new school started operation five years later to replace the school that was closed due to the First World War. Founded in 1919 in Istanbul, Circassian Women's Solidarity Association opened Circassian School for Girls a year later. The school had 180 students divided into six classes. Students received English, painting, music, gymnastics, and theater education. Unlike the previous school, the Circassian language was taught with the Latin script. On September 5, 1923, the Circassian School for Girls was shut down. Beginning in the early years of the Republic, citizens were confined to Circassian villages and houses by Citizens Speak Turkish campaigns and various prohibitions on language. During this period, when relations with the Caucasus were also completely severed, no activities related to Circassian could be carried out for 50 years and the number of speakers declined greatly. Our fathers had to go through all the bureaucracy with what little Turkish they knew in the government buildings, trying to explain themselves with a few sentences worth of Turkish. This was very hard. This put both them and the people they had to deal with in a tough spot. That's why they always told us, whatever you do, don't use this language, learn Turkish. We see today what this has cost us. Circassians in Turkey first began to contact and visit the Caucasus in the 1970s and were then introduced to Circassian books printed in the Cyrillic alphabet. These alphabets, published by the Ankara Caucasian Association in Yamchi magazine in 1978, were the first step regarding the language after a long break. However, due to the political zeitgeist, the books printed in Caucasus with the Russian alphabet were seen by the state as both separatist and tools of propaganda for communism. Thus, literacy in Circassian remained an idealistic effort of a small group. I believe the mother language is a right. I choose this department so I could read and write in my mother tongue and communicate with the motherland in my own language. The 1980 military coup marked the beginning of a new dark period for Circassian as it did for the other languages spoken in Turkey. While the use of languages other than Turkish were prohibited, the possession of Circassian publications was considered a separatist crime. Most of the books from the Caucasus were burnt and destroyed. The 1982 constitution included the articles the language of the state is Turkish and no language other than Turkish can be taught to Turkish citizens as their mother tongue in educational institutions. If you compare it with the slightly distant past, it's evident that we are doing so much better. In the 1890s and even prior to that, when we had Circassian language classes in these very association buildings, we had to have someone guard the door in case someone approaches so that they could inform the class and they could wipe the Circassian on the board and turn it into an English lesson. We had to go through circumstances like these. 
With the accession of Turkey as a candidate for the European Union in 1999, bans on languages began to be lifted. In 2002, broadcasting on radio and television in different languages and dialects was allowed, and Turkish Radio and Television Association began 30-minute television and radio broadcasts one day a week in Circassian in 2004. A Turkish translation was required to follow the radio broadcast at 6.30 a.m., and Turkish subtitles were to be provided for the TV programs. The programs could be broadcast only if they were music, documentaries, and news programs aimed at adults. Programs aimed at teaching language to children were still banned. In 2009, when TRT Kurdi was established and started broadcasting 24 hours a day, Circassian radio and TV broadcasts were discontinued. Since 2006, Caucasian associations have been offering Circassian courses. As you can see, our children are so happy here that most of them come here without even telling their parents or even though they are not students here. This means that how much they will take ownership of the language will depend on how high we set the bar here, which shows that we have many shortcomings we still need to fix. We need to support these initiatives. If we give them with good opportunities, I wholeheartedly believe that they are going to be children who will protect and uphold their own identity as well as the Circassian language and culture. The second important step in language teaching was the establishment of Circassian language departments at Kayseri RGS and Düzce Universities. The Circassian language and culture program at Kayseri RGS University, although founded in 2011, only started to take students in the 2018-19 academic year. The Circassian language and literature program at Düzce University was established in 2013. Difficulties in finding teachers and lack of educational materials stand as obstacles to teaching Circassian. Today, the Circassian population around the world is approximately 3 million people. With 80,000 of these living in the Caucasus, 100,000 in the Middle East and over 2 million in Turkey. While Circassian people have the right to education in their mother tongue in Israel and the Caucasus, they do not have this right in any of the other countries and their mother tongue education is limited to elective lessons. According to the data from UNESCO, Circassian is one of the endangered languages of Turkey. The number of its speakers is on a sharp decline and the rate of acquisition as a mother tongue by children is very low. There is no hope, no civilization, nor art left, no past and no future. The people themselves die when their language dies one day.